Chapter 16 of Dave Dawson on Guadalcanal by Robert Sidney Bowen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Luck of the Doomed. And now the sixty-four dollar question, Dave Dawson got out in a bitter, puzzled voice. What in thunder's the big idea? Go ahead and answer, Freddy. I can't even make a guess, the English youth groaned and turned from staring out the empty cabin port. All I can say is that I am absolutely and completely baffled. I don't understand it at all. What to do suddenly caused that Sasebo to have us herded back to this empty cabin again, after the way you raved at him, if he had drawn his samurai sword and chopped off your thick head, I could have understood. But to not so much as bat an eye, and then obviously order that big chap to bring us back here? Well, it's quite beyond me, quite. You can say that again for me, Dawson grunted. But where do you get that chopped off your thick head stuff, huh? Definitely, Freddy snapped and gave him a withering glare. In future, kindly remember that though you may wish to be killed on the spot because you rile up some blasted cutthroat, I haven't the same desire to die. Dawson grinned and let it grow into a chuckle. Boy, he breathed, I kind of told him a thing or six, didn't I, huh? Oh, heck, Freddy, I'll admit it, was taking a chance. But between you, me, and the flight deck of this tub, I got a hunch I put a little bee in that guy's bonnet. I hope so, but I sincerely doubt it, Freddy Farmer said. That bloke is nobody's fool, even though he may look like one. However, I sincerely hope you are right, Dave. You mean about trying to make him believe that Admiral Jackson's force is up north, off the Japanese coast? Yes, that's what I meant, Dave nodded, and I think he swallowed the bait, too. I'm almost willing to bet that before long he'll swing this task force about and start highballing back up north, and send out some of his long-range scout bombers, too. But maybe he won't, Freddy Farmer argued. So where does that leave us? I'll tell you. Penned up in this blasted cabin, while Jackson's force is hunting for something that isn't there. And good grief, Dave. Tomorrow at dawn is the time for the Guadalcanal attack. If this force goes sliding right on down by Jackson's position, there'll be the deuce to pay. You remember what Colonel Welsh kept pounding home to us? If he doesn't drive off this force, at least, the Tulagi and Guadalcanal attack may turn out terrible flops, and at a terrible price, too. Gosh. Things are so blessed well mixed up, I don't know what to think. Fact is, I can't think of anything but that we're prisoners here on this confounded vessel. If there were only some way we could escape and get in touch with Admiral Jackson's force... Yeah, if only, Dawson grated, with a frown, as he twisted one clenched fist into the palm of his other hand. I'd give my right arm, and maybe a couple of legs, just for a fifty-fifty chance to get out of this jam. And I've been thinking, too, Freddy. Thinking of what? the English-born air ace demanded, as Dawson lapsed into sudden silence. Dave stared at him for a moment, as though he hadn't heard. So engrossed was he with his own thoughts. Then suddenly he snapped his fingers and nodded abruptly. About where we are right now, he said, and where Admiral Jackson's force should be, if they've been carrying out the search according to schedule. Freddy, if we could only get away in one of those Jap crates up on the deck, I think I could find Jackson's force before the fuel gave out. And of course, if we failed first, to raise the force on the Jap radio in the plane. Freddy, pal, you and I are wasting precious time, cooling our heels in this place. Remember what I said? If we don't get a break, it's up to us to make one. Well, it's up to us, and now, Freddy. Now that you've brought up the subject, I fancy that I could find our force, too, the English youth replied with a nod. It would be blasted close, but I think I could find it if I had to. But so what, Dave, old thing? It all boils down to the same problem we faced since that two-faced blighter shot us down. 
How in the world are we going to escape? Make the break, as I just said, Dawson came back quickly. Then, looking steadily at his pal, he continued, Make a break for both of us, I hope. But maybe it'll turn out a break for only one of us. Get what I mean, son? Yes, and go on, Freddy said quietly. That doesn't worry me a bit. I'm a very lucky chap, you know. Thanks, and it's been nice knowing you too, you bum, the Yank Air Ace said with a grin. And then, in a deadly serious tone, he went on. It might be curtains for one of us, Freddy, though I hope and pray not. However, you never can tell, you know. Dawson ended the last with a faint hunch of his shoulders and an adequate gesture with both hands. Freddy Farmer looked at him for a moment and then snorted softly. All right, old chap, all right, he finally got out. What do I have to do? Get down on my blasted hands and knees and beg? What in the world are you driving at, anyway? Just this, pal. Dawson came right back at him and stuck out his jaw. Both of us, or one of us anyway, has got to grab one of the Jap crates up on the flight deck and scram. Now hold everything a minute and let me finish. I know that we are locked up here and no way to get out. So we've got to make a way such as this. We bang on that door, there, and shout our heads off. Somebody is bound to come. We tell them we want to make a deal with Suicide Sasebo. In short, if he guarantees that we'll be taken to Japan as special prisoners of war, then we'll... Definitely no, Freddy Farmer snapped. I wouldn't give the blighter the satisfaction of... Clam up your yap, will you? Dawson hurled at him. For cat's sakes, let me finish, dope. I'm simply telling you what we're going to say, not what we're going to do. So just keep your shirt on, Mug, and let me finish. Okay? We bang and thump on the door there. Some guy comes, and we give him a song and dance about how we're willing to swap military info for a square deal from Sasebo. It stands to reason that the guy will either go tell Sasebo on the run or take us there. Okay? Remember that last trip? What do you mean, do I remember that last trip? The English-born air ace asked. Dawson groaned and made the motions with his hands of twisting an invisible neck. What do I mean, he says, Dave grated. I mean this, pal. To go see Sasebo, we have to walk along the flight deck and weave in and out among all those planes, okay? Supposing we suddenly duck under a wing, leap into a cockpit, and kick the engine into life. And, and away we go, huh? I'm with you all the way, old thing, Freddy Farmer said quietly. Of course you know that, what? Dave grinned, reached out a hand, and slapped the English youth on the back. My pal always, he said, and meant it. Well, that's what I mean, kid. Maybe we both wouldn't make it, but doggone it, Freddy, one of us has just got to make it. The way those planes are parked up there, we could get off before they knew what the heck was going on. Am I right, or am I right? Don't bother asking me, Freddy replied, because I'm all for the idea. But there's one thing I think we'd better check, Dave, just in case we don't make it together. Shoot, pal, Dawson said instantly. What's on your mind? The approximate location of Admiral Jackson's force, the English youth replied at once. I think we'd better agree where it is, or at least where we think it is. You see what I mean? Dawson nodded and started to speak, but at that moment he experienced a crazy, daffy feeling. He felt as though there were a third person in the room, and as if that third person were listening to everything that was said, and, and chuckling up his sleeve. I don't think we have to worry about that, kid, Dawson replied. I think we both know just about where Admiral Jackson's force should be. The big idea is, can we grab a plane and scram away from this tub? In other words, are you game, Freddy? The English youth didn't reply at once. He just stared at Dawson, and smoldering fires glowed in his eyes. And to use a thoroughly yank expression, he eventually said, tight-lipped, 
What do you think, huh? Dave grinned and nodded happily. Okay, kid, he said. I was only asking. Well, what are we waiting for? Huh? The English-born air ace seemed to hesitate a brief moment, and then he smiled and nodded. I'll bite, he said. Just what are we waiting for? Go ahead, old thing. Anything is better than this, what? Dawson hesitated and shot Freddy a keen look as though he was trying to check up and make sure that his pal was definitely in favor of the plan. Then he nodded silently, turned and walked over to the cabin door with one fist raised to pound against it. But miracle of miracles, before his knuckles had so much as touched the cabin door, he heard the key grate in the lock, and the door opened in his face to reveal the huge Jap officer who had conducted them to Sasebo's quarters that other time. Eyes popping and mouth hanging open, Dawson stared at the huge Jap. The son of Nippon smiled, nodded, and made a faint gesture with one hand. Come with me, he said. Honorable Admiral desires to talk with you again. Come, please. For a moment, Dawson could hardly believe his eyes and his ears. He gaped at the Jap and then looked at Freddy Farmer. A look of astonished disbelief was stamped on the English youth's face. Dawson looked back at the big Jap and nodded. Okay, he said, lead the way. It so happens that we want to see the Admiral, too. The big Jap smiled, and a funny look suddenly gleamed in his double-lidded eyes. It struck Dawson as though the man were enjoying some little secret at their expense. However, he didn't give the Jap's expression more than a passing thought. Lady Luck was indeed smiling on Freddy Farmer and him. Things were working out even better than he had hoped. Just one more break and everything would be perfect. Just a chance to suddenly duck away from this big Jap and pile into the pit of one of those Jap planes up on the flight deck. Once Freddy and he were in the pit, the rest would be a cinch. They'd go scooting down the narrow takeoff lane before the dumbfounded Japs realized what had happened. Right. Just one little more break, and then it would be the Japs' turn to receive some knockout surprises. And so, with a fervent prayer in his heart, Dawson shot a last second warning look at Freddy Farmer, and then stepped through the cabin door and out into the companionway. A couple of minutes later, he was leading the way up the ladder to the flight deck. His heart was doing wild, outside loops in his chest and the blood was racing through his veins. And as he neared the top of the ladder, he heard the glorious sound of Jap aircraft engines warming up. That made it better and better. Maybe ten minutes more, and Freddy and he would be streaking away on a beeline course toward where they believed Admiral Jackson's powerful task force to be. End of Chapter 16